It appears that Mike Pillow has some new evidence of voter fraud. Which means it's time for another episode of Pillow Talk. God gave me this platform. I already know I'm going to win. China did our vote. Biden and Harris would say, hey, we're here to protect the country and resign. Mike Lindell's a conspiracy. Theory. But you haven't. Just forget about the evidence. This was attacked. Mike Pillow founder and Donald Trump loyalist Mike Lindell is now claiming that Republican Governor Brian Kemp stole the recent primary election because he got more than 70% of the vote. Huh. Interesting. So now, uh, this is the first time that I've actually seen Mike Lindell go after Republicans. Very, very strange. Uh, now, here's the thing. Again, Kemp, who is a con very conservative Republican, somehow he thinks, uh, Lindell thinks that being popular with Republicans as a very conservative Republican and getting a lot of the vote means you you that that that's evidence of a stolen election hold on uh, you know what let's let mike explain and then we'll break it down camp they put so high up that they wanted they didn't even want to pay. well he, he got 73 percent right. how could you take his other votes well let me tell you everybody we have preliminary evidence that candace taylor for every single vote that Kemp got he took her got their votes and then Candace got five percent back. Now these are these are these are all through the the, the um, all the precinct, and then you have stuff go on in Georgia where certain people like Jody Heights, I believe, and and uh, this wit, they got the same percentage in just about every county, like seventeen percent. What is that, Brandon? Well, I'll tell you what it is, everybody. They you know they didn't think. I, did they not think anybody is going to look? No, they don't care. They want our country. I'm okay. I'm still confused. Okay. Okay. Listen to me. Okay. So they got this vote, but they, you know, they got these votes and then, but they only got 5% back from the votes. What are you talking about? What are you talking? I don't understand. <laughs> and again, the captioning on that is freaking hilarious. Okay. Wow. Wow. Uh, look, <laughs> total insanity, right? But here, the argument is, I can't believe that a Republican would get 73% of the vote. Well, it's a Republican primary, and so... Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I mean, in a general election, probably wouldn't get that much of the vote, obviously, but it's a primary, which means you've got Republicans voting for other Republicans. And he pulled way, way ahead than David Perdue and Candace Taylor, and so... Look, again, before the election, half of all Georgia voters, including 76% of Republicans, they approved of Kemp's job performance. So he's pretty popular. And Republicans think he was doing a pretty good job. That seems to track that he would win by a pretty large, comfortable margin over David Perdue. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's called logic, Mike. Logic. You should probably use it someday. But then again, that means you might actually have to put down the pipe and turn your brain on. That might be a little bit difficult for Mike Billow. Uh, but look, anyway, uh, of course, being, uh, you know, Mike being the Trump ass kisser that he is, he says, well, it's got to be fraud. It's got to be fraud because we had uh, we had machines. Uh, yes, uh, the machines. It's the machines that we're taking over. It's 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 like uh, you know it's like the Matrix. You know, we got the machines everywhere, and we might be living in a simulation run by the Pomeranians. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bet you wonder when I was going to bring them back. Uh, but look, <laughs> this primary. Let me tell you the real real issue again. Going back to him being a Trump ass kiss kisser, David Perdue was endorsed by Trump, and so. Mike Lindell thinks, oh, no, well, obviously, if it's against Trump, 
then, you know, if, if the Trump candidate does not win, it must mean that they, whoever they are, interfered. That's what it is. And so, it, of course, it has to be fraud. It has to be fraud. It has to be fraud. Now, Kemp, why didn't uh, Donald Trump endorse Kemp? Because Kemp refused to go along with Donald Trump's insane conspiracy theory. Now, I'm not defending Brian Kemp. I think he's a terrible person. And by the way, uh, there's a difference here between voter fraud and voter suppression. There is no doubt that Brian Kemp has engaged in massive voter suppression in Georgia when he was Secretary of State. I mean, that's when he was running against, by the way, Stacey Abrams. So now, uh, what is voter suppression? It's basically shutting down polling places in African-American areas making it so there are less polling places so that people in African-American areas had to travel uh, further, wait in longer lines. That is voter suppression. It's basically uh, making, uh, trying to discourage people from voting by making it as inconvenient as possible. Yes, technically you can still vote, but when you make it so hard to do, in essence, it is a, an, an attempt to try to shut down the vote and to reduce the turnout. Then, of course, you also have purging of voter rolls. So sometimes, uh, and of course, like purges happen all the time where you have to get, you know, people who are actually dead or have moved away. You got to get them out of the voter rolls, right? Now, sometimes, and a lot of times, actually, people who are registered to vote, who do live there, end up getting purged as well. And it happens, unfortunately, to African-Americans far more than any other group. Gee, I wonder why. Hmm, it always seems to happen to more African-Americans in red states. Hmm. Hmm. Things like interstate cross-check, uh, which would, you know, find similar names and then kick them out because, oh, this this is obviously the same person that's registered, even though you have lots and lots of people that are have the same name. Uh, that's like finding every John Smith and saying, no, no, there can be only one John Smith. Every other John Smith that lives in this state or in this county must be fraudulent. So that's how that works, okay? And, you know, the, those purging, uh, those, those voter purges, uh, tougher voting requirements, things like that, voter ID. So that's what Brian Kemp did. Now, for Republicans, they look at that and they say, absolutely, that is what we like. We love that. Blocking black people from voting? Hell yes. And they didn't see, most importantly, backing Donald Trump on his election fraud bullshit as important as backing somebody that they already knew that was in power that has done a lot to serve them, uh, particularly, right? And so they overwhelmingly approved of Brian Kemp and voted him back in, or at least voted him in this primary. Uh, and of course, we'll have to see the matchup, the, the rematch, versus uh, Stacey Abrams. So now, <clears throat> that said, is there ever issues with voting machines? Yes. Yes, there are. <laughs> and so, look, I, I talk about this, I try to try to talk about this every time we do a, a Mike Pillow segment, because he's not wrong when you say that he says there are, could be problems with machines, or if he said that. And again, he goes off into crazy land. But there are issues with voting machines sometimes. For example, one Georgia election uh, actually did face some technical difficulties leading to a change result. Now, this was during a Democratic Party primary. So Michelle Long Spears was found to have been missing about 3,792 votes uh, in the District 2 primary for the Board of Commissioners in DeKalb County. She then alerted officials to the fact that she received zero votes in many areas. Uh, according to the New York Times. So when you see that, you're like, hey, wait a minute. That doesn't look right. Okay. So they looked into it. Gabriel Sterling, CEO of the Secretary of State's office, told Axios that the mistake was found and it came down to a series of human errors and then insisted it would be caught. The system is designed to catch these things because the most uh, of the most fallible part of the whole thing, which is a human being. Sterling said some of the factors leading to wrong tallies were last-minute dropout by another candidate, as well as redrawn district lines. So understand that, yes, these things do happen. There are 
sometimes issues with voting machines. And if you want to replace the machines or if you want to do things that do uh, paper, uh, you know, ballot backups and things like that, um, I, I'm on all in favor of it, right? Yes, I do want accountability. I want to make sure that if you have issues, that they're remedied, that you have recounts, because it doesn't matter, you know, I, I, I don't care who's running against who or whatever. I want an accurate count so that, of course, so we can trust our elections, right? And I think that's what, obviously, what everybody wants. But it doesn't mean fraud. It doesn't mean fraud is happening, okay? Uh, again, this is not part of some engineered conspiracy to steal the votes. What is happening with some of these machines, because they are fairly old, and our election infrastructure is is quite a, is, is quite old, actually. Um, it's Murphy's Law in action. If it can go wrong, at some point, it probably will. And so you want to actually go and, you know, modernize our, our electoral infrastructure. I think that would be an incredibly worthy elections, or, or I'm sorry, worthy uh, investments for our elections. Again, this is why it's good to have audits, backups, ways of verifying votes after they're cast, uh, upgrades to the infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. None of it has anything to do with Mike Pillow's allegations that, oh, it's they. They're, they're, they're the, the Chinese, the Iranians, the Bomberanians. They're stealing our elections. Complete and utter nuttery. 